As well as making your own repositories, another thing that you can do is fork from someone else's repository. Now, this might seem a little strange, but if I want to add code to this uh, kernel U garlic and I don't have direct permission to edit it, one of the things that I can do is fork it and make a pull request and say, hey guys, I changed this stuff, you should add it to your code as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and fork it here. Uh, it's going to ask you where you want, whether to your organization or to yourself. Um, for a while I was working with the uh, Suicide Squirrels, great guys doing some uh, bring up on the LGG4 to get to Oreo for the first time. Uh, pretty, pretty fun stuff to work on. Um, and that's why it gave me that option as well. But so when you fork something, you're just like the little picture shows here, you're making a copy of it. And so then you'll have your very own copy to work with. And this is handy, you know, if you want to um, borrow some open source code that someone else has been working on, you want to maybe make your own changes or see how you can uh, change it for the better for other people to use as well, um, then you can make your own your own copies. So now it's notice Alaska Linux user kernel U garlic, and it still has everything. It retained all the branches, it retained all the commits, uh, everything that was in the last one is there. Now if I take the README, right, and actually if I just make, how about I make a new, create a new file, we'll call it uh, readme.md for markdown document, and we'll say uh, my copy of the kernel. Okay, and we'll uh, commit this new file. Now, my commit is now one commit ahead of the commit for the that we had forked from. So I have one extra commit in mine, and it says my copy of the kernel right here. Not very useful, oops, not very useful, but uh, there it is. So I've made my own changes. So then we can take that and make a pull request and say, hey, I want you guys to add this uh, to your branch. Now you wouldn't do this in your folder. You would go to where you forked it from and do a pull request here and reference back to your change that you had made. All right. Now we're going to look at a pull request that we did make earlier in our 101 repository. Right? And we have two branches in our one pull request. And it says, you know, we want to we added these files via upload and I think this is a good idea and there's no conflict, right? So when you do a pull request on somebody else's material, you should be very thorough to explain what it is you're trying to do and why they should add this material to their code. And then you can say, uh, you know, here's all the reasons. And then for them, or if it's somebody else doing it, doing a pull request for your material, you'll get this screen where you can merge that pull request if you want. Now there's some options. You can uh, create a merge commit. This just adds that uh, those commits to this branch. You can squash this and merge, which means to take the three files that have been added, squash them into one commit and put it in here, or uh, rebase, which the three commits from this branch will be rebased and added to the base branch. All right, so this is a little bit confusing. Um, for the most part, you probably just want to do a merge commit, but uh, as you go along, you'll probably learn the ins and outs of things and uh, and how you can do this. Now, for anything, you can assign some reviewers and people to look at this and put labels on it, um, projects and milestones to say, hey, this is there's a reason why we're doing this, it, especially if you're working with a large group of people. And then, once you've decided that you want that commit, or if you, you don't, you can actually just close the pull request and say, I don't want it, don't want it, you know, don't want it, hit close, and you're done. Uh, of course, you can just say more comments like, hey, need more info, and then you comment on it. And then it says, hey, need more info, so then whoever made the pull request will get a notification, hey, they need, they this is their comment, they need more info, hopefully they'll give you more info. You finally decide you want you want to use it, so you can hit this merge pull request, right? 
and it's like yep we're gonna do this and you can say confirm merge and there we go so it has been successfully merged and closed so now if we go back to our 101 right we still have the two branches because the two branches are not the same right we have different files in one than in the other but we've merged those commits and now this one has 13 commits including the merge poll for the other um, files and they were added right here so um, just interesting uh, ways that you can work with polling and you can commit your code and, and actually fork someone else's code make some changes and then do a pull request on their repository to say hey I want to make those changes these are a good idea here's why you should do it please add it to your code and uh, you might say well why would you do that well you know as you're working on different phones and things and different people start working on it you'll end up start working together and you can actually do the changes yourself and uh, and just add those commits and then fix things for other people um, or you know like myself I've worked on a few apps with some people so you can uh, change the parts of the app you need to change and then uh, submit that to them to consider for uh, fixing so hopefully that uh, made some sense and how we go about uh, you know doing a pull request and uh, and adding those in if we look at our um, recently open github 101 we see here now that on the master it has merged back into one but notice our local repositories are still behind so we would have to pull that new information down to bring our ourselves locally up to par so just a few things to remember and consider when you're working with uh, get hopefully that wasn't too confusing and made some sense